Okay, I'm endorsed by Jesus. Why don't you give Jesus a hand? Yeah, the healer. Woo. Come on, stand up and give the healer what he deserves. Woo, it's the healer. Woo. He's in the room. Who isn't it awesome that he's in the room? Woo, let's give God some glory. I know they want me to be all professional, but did y'all see my baby in his chariot? Okay. All right, uh, calm down. You can sit down. It's all right. It's all right. All right, Mr. Tyler, I'm going to do it for you. Pull it in. Pull it in. I got this. I got this. Yes, indeed. Oh, I'm excited about this series. I really, really am. I'm teaching this to the house tonight. Yeah. Go Facebook and TikTok and whoever else, wherever platform. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm teaching this to the house. Oh, there's nothing like teaching to the house. See, when you teach to people that you know God has given to you to be able to burst the anointing in them. See, sometimes other people look at you, they don't see nothing. They say, oh, you know, and I don't see what she see. But see, when a visionary and a prophetic person see you, see, they don't see you where you are. They see the you that's coming forth. Ooh, they see the one that's birthing in the spirit. Oh my God. The one that's getting ready to bust loose. Hallelujah. Mm, the Lord said he going to visit you and he's not forgotten you. He said that gift on the inside of you getting ready to come forth. And guess what? I'm the midwife, baby. I'm going to push that thing out of you Hallelujah. until it makes its arrival. Oh, yeah. Somebody book call personal rehearsal in here. Oh yeah, we gonna do this girl. Yeah. Oh, let's give God some glory. Oh, come on. Come on. Let's give him some glory. Who are we talking about the anointing today? Oh, see, there are hindrances to keep you from flowing in the anointing. Mm -hmm. They're little chose, little devils that keep you to keep that anointing pressed down. Make sure it's not working. Oh, make sure it's not on a 10 when it should be on a 10. Oh, my God, my God. Father, be glorified. Father, I release a prayerful spirit in here. Lord, I thank you for the presence. I feel your presence. But Lord, I thank you I release the spirit of expectation in the bellies of your people. Let it explode like dynamite. Let this word drip from the heavens and explode on the inside. And Lord, I thank you. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Let's get ready for the word today. You know, I was thinking about how could I start and what best to start when you're going to talk about the anointing? What best ministry to start to talk about other than Jesus? He is our model. If you want to talk about the demonstration of the anointing, there's none that is greater than him. So let's, let's just do a quick little scale. He preached. So it's okay if God put a preaching in your spirit. He preached. He taught. If you an anointed teacher, awesome. Because it's like our father. But one of the main things he came to do was to heal. And then he said, on top of that, I'm going to cast out devils. So that's the four areas. You say you called the ministry? Show me what you're working with. Show me. Are you preaching? Are you teaching? Are you healing the sick? Are you casting out devils? Do you know this actual four little uh, group here is what everybody needs? This is what we need to be bringing to the world. Amen. Do you know when God comes on the inside of you and you've really been anointed? Do you know the Lord drop a preach inside of you? Because you so want people saved and delivered. That's one of the signs. I'm going to give you some manifestations of some things when God is doing some great things in your life. And that excitement has happened. 
that true born again experience. So what is the anointing? What is it? The anointing is the oil that's used in vessels. The Bible talks about it, how there was the anointed of vessels in the tabernacle. Kings were anointed. Prophets were anointed. High priest was anointed. How do we anoint today? We should. The oil is just using as proxy to bring that Holy Spirit into whatever situation that you're dealing with. Do you know you should have anointed oil at your house? How many of you all got all anointed oil at your house? How many of you actually anoint your doorposts and your entryway and plead the blood over there? Command that nothing come in there that's not like God. Mm -hmm. How many of you anoint your children every day? How many of you speak over them? Speak over them. You know when they go to bed, you should speak over them. You should lay hands on them while they sleep and command that there will be no bad dreams and nothing would torment them. Y'all can start writing. I'm giving you some keys right now. But in the Word of God, the anointing is to smear, to rub, or to pour. In 1 Samuel 16 and 13, the prophet Samuel anointed David as king. So do you know whenever God has anointed you for something, he's literally putting you with an authority in that area. Do you know that times I can know when God's getting ready to move on the inside of you? There begins to be a glory. There begins to be an acceleration in a certain area. All of a sudden your mind used to look fuzzy. It ain't fuzzy no more. It starts to clear up. See, before God getting ready to put that path and open that door for you, he's not going to anoint you. To, he's not going to let you go in there unanointed. He's not. He'll hold that thing back until you're ready. God smears the Holy Spirit. So when, he, when they smeared that oil, there was spirit and the Holy Spirit over there. Mm -hmm. or, his, or actually his nature. When you're anointed, you've taken on his nature. Oh my God. Do you know God is setting you apart? He's marking you. He's sanctifying you. So see, how many of you believe that you're called to preach? Called to bring the word. That you, you may not be doing it, but you know that there's an anointing upon you. When that happens and God truly calls you, he's saying, I set her apart. I set him apart. Did he set you apart from everybody else? That means you look totally different. Your mind change, your heart change, your walk change, where you go changes. How you deal with things changes. But the mark of sanctification, let's stop there for a moment. To be set apart. Oh my God. Do you know what that means to be set apart? Sometimes they use the word minister so loosely. Everybody's a minister now. Everybody. But do they really know what that means? Do you know that's a charge? That's a walk? Do you know when that you put that minister before your name? Do you know you're actually bound to lead people the right way? Do you know people be watching your walk? They watch what you do? Well, I'm at my own house. But you have that minister's mantle you say you've taken on. Mm. My, my, my. The oil is a type and a shadow. In the New Testament, it's the Greek word typo, which means example or modern, like a, a model or pattern. In the Old Testament, it is the fulfillment in, in the, uh, in the uh, Old Testament, it's the fulfillment of the Old Testament in the New, of Jesus' life in his ministry. Mm, my God. See, they had the oil. But when that anointing now comes and you are anointed for something, that means they're smearing you with the anointing and the call of the Holy Spirit on whatever you're called for. Now we're gonna pull, we're gonna put some bullet points and some things and some old thinking that probably has been dropped on you. The oil was used to heal and deliver. 
You don't sling that oil as happily. See, when you, when, when you put that oil on your child, you seal in him. You send in, you send in the anointing with him. You send in the Holy Spirit with him. In Mark 6 and 13, and they cast out many devils and anointed with all many that were sick and healed. In James 5 and 14, it, it is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. My, my, my. So God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power in Acts 10 and 38. We use the oil as an act of faith, act of obedience. When praying for people, whenever we take that oil, I don't know about you all, but see, whenever the Lord tells me to lay hands, I don't lay hands just because it's just a good thing to do, make somebody feel good. See, whenever I see a tormented mind, sometimes the Lord will tell me, he said, just, just touch your hand. He said, release power. There are times I've seen people in stores and the Lord said, he said, just stand by them. Make a conversation with them. And while I'm talking to them, I'm releasing anointing of deliverance and freedom. But when you put that oil there, that is just a substance as a contact. And it's so amazing because the Lord is dealing with us with the oil. I've had four people in one day to ask, do you still have the oil? Do you still have the consecrated oil? I said, okay, he's saying something. The oil is symbolic. It is to appoint, it is to endorse, it is to empower, and it is to place in authority. That's the reason why you don't take the ministry name. I'm a minister, I'm a pastor. You're being placed in authority. That means you have the authority to pull people out. That means you have an authority to be able to stand in that office to call that demon out. If you call yourself standing in that authority and you haven't been endorsed by it, God hasn't put a sanction on it, that's how that thing, you ever you saw in the scriptures where he said they beat the clothes off of them? They weren't, they weren't, they endorsed themselves. God set people apart in the Old Testament. Kings in 1 Samuel 16, verses 1 and 13. Priests were anointed in Exodus 28 and 41. Prophets were anointed in 1 Kings 19 and 16. Altars were anointed in Exodus 29 and 36. This coming week I'm starting some, I'm on a mission to train individual people. And whatever the Lord tells me to train somebody on. So there's a group that we're getting ready to start training on demonic altars. But you know, I was real hesitant about that for a moment. Because the Lord said, he said, you make a recording and prepare them to call themselves getting ready to contend with altars. See, there's altars unto the Lord. There's altars unto devils. Yes, satanic. And there's demonic altars that people may have your name on it. Oh yeah, oh we're gonna talk about that. But I, I am really having a burden for the younger women that's wondering why this pattern of being, can't be married or can't stay married or, or can't have babies or can't give birth or the, the, the poverty following them. See, you gotta go in there and tear down some of those altars. So you all be praying for us. This is going to be a seven day class that I'm going to do for them. Somebody got to have the heart for the younger women. Somebody has to do that. See, I think about if I would have had someone to do that, my goodness, maybe that's why I have such a burden for it. The pouring of the anointing oil is, the whole, is for the purpose of the Holy Spirit. When Samuel, now he was a prophet, so he was standing in that place. So you have to also know who implement you, who put you in that office. Did God sanction you? Who were you called by? So that way when it gets rough, you can go back to God and say, wait, 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 God, 
uh, so you did this? And I said, yes. But see, you have to be careful of what anointings that you serve under. Because whatever you serve under gonna be on you. Okay? Benny Hinn, known for miracles, signs, and wonders. God birthed him in healing. That's what God gave him, right? Derek Prince, just as calm, older man calm, but mess with him in deliverance, okay? Every demon across the room. I had never seen such a quiet deliverance service. I had never seen it. It's online, if you, if you look it up. That man just start calmly calling things out. Man, stuff start breaking loose in there. I thought, well, look at this. And you know what it is? It's the voice of authority. That's his area. What is your area today? Tell me what your area is. What are you called for? Mm, my, my. There's only one anointing. One. I want you to remember that. The anointing comes to bring power, to destroy yokes. The anointing can come up on you, it can flow in you, it can flow through you to someone else. It can also be around you. You can walk in a place and the anointing be around you and just start drawing people. Ma, ma, haunted she. But there's only one anointing. How often have you heard people say, oh, I want a deliverance anointing. I want an Esther's anointing. I want a Moses anointing. I want a worship anointing. I want a prophetic anointing upon my life. Uh-huh. But, but let me just say this. One anointing is just demonstrated in many different areas. It's how it's demonstrated. It's, you notice it always say the anointed. The anointed one. One anointing. How it is expressed, how it is demonstrated. That just means the glory of God and the way it's being presented is flowing. You go to a service and you say, my God, there was deliverance in that house. That was a deliverance anointing. See, anointings are stirred by the need of the people. That is the reason why I impress so much. Come here expecting. Come here with a, pr don't, don't come here Asking for God, oh Lord, when you get here, God anoint. No, you need to ask the Lord before you get here. Before you get here, God give me, I, I'm going to the house of God. I'm going among miracles, signs, and wonders. Do you know the amount of power that is in this house? Do you know you sitting right next to a woman that could lay hands on you and your mind will never be the same? You don't know who you sitting near. Don't take wide people for granted. You don't know what's bubbling up on the inside of them. Because there's many different anointings. Do you know there are seasons in your life that God will stir up an anointing in you? Let me give y'all an example. So we did an all night prayer thing, right? And I promise you, if God didn't lose a preaching anointing on Amy, and we were laughing because I could remember, and I even have the text, where she says, well, you sound preachy. Oh, I want to take that little clip out that video and say, let me, Lord, can I please send it to her and let her play it back for her? She said, well, you know your sound preach. I said, yeah, when that fire gets on the inside of you, you, you just shell off that little, you know, all that little prissy stuff. You understand, Amy, don't you understand? <laughs> Come on, I'm sure somebody had to see that. I was like, well, get out of here. Look at the fire in that belly. You know why? When you're anointed, there's a power that come up on the inside. It's beyond you. It's beyond you. You be on your job and all of a sudden, you, you, you don't even know, you preaching to the people, you be like, oh my God, why am I getting so preachy? Because that's the power. And you want people saved, you want them delivered. Uh-huh. So how did you flow in the anointing? Obedience. Obedience to God's word. I am asking the Lord to give me creative ways to do what I need to do to get the word on the inside of God's people. You want to change lives? How many people say, Prophet, how do I maintain my deliverance? Stay in the word and make it life on the inside of you. Well, Prophetess, what do you mean life? That means you're reading it. But it's a storybook to you. 
But when that word come alive, you convicted by it. It will whip you across your head. You would think somebody got a stick beating on you. It be, and you know what? Conviction changes you. It changes your walk. Yeah, it make you repent. It make you say, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had a, I had a call today. I had to fuss at two people that I love so dearly. And you know what blessed me? Before I could finish, I'm sorry, I repent. I'm like, see what I'm saying? That's them God people. And you know what? Before, I couldn't even remember the rest of my fuss. <laughs> because I heard the humility and I heard the heart. Where's your heart today? Where's your heart? You want to flow in the anointing? You got to have more word in you. Right now, everybody assess your word. Those of you on Facebook and different platforms, assess the amount of word. How much word time do you have? You need to upgrade that. You want to wonder why you keep going back in your cycle? You don't have enough word. It ain't alive in you yet. Oh, It ain't been made a lot. In other words, you got a fire with some wood. Somebody put some little stuff, you know the little stuff you put on the stir to, to make it burn? But ain't no fire you got there yet. So ain't nothing burning. The fire you can't purify nothing in My you. Because it ain't lit yet. Ooh, somebody tell them, Mrs. they need to get lit. <laughs> they ain't lit. <laughs> okay, calm down. Y'all got to get lit. Y'all got to get lit. Y'all got to get lit. Ain't nothing burning. Nothing burning. You look like a pretty fire. Your wood is so pretty. Oh, it's pretty. It's pretty even smell like fire, but there ain't no power, no lit, nothing ain't in it. How do you flow in the anointing? Obedience to the word. Some people say, well, prophetess, well, what do you think I should do? What does the word say? You do what the word say. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. Study God's word. You've got to have more time. Now, let me say this. God is real demanding. How many of you want to walk in great anointing? Like you really want to, within your area, whatever it is, you got to give the man more time. Baby, he like a husband saying, you need to give me more time. I've been looking for you. And you missed me on, on the day, 5 a.m. in the morning. You didn't get up. And I was lonely for you. Oh, my God. He said, I cried because you didn't come. I waited for you. He said, I waited for your smell. I waited for your touch. And you wasn't there. I'm saying this, but y'all, the Lord didn't say those words to me before I cried for a week. So I put the long phone back on everything. I'm like, what am I doing here? What am I doing? Lord, I'm sorry. You know you can get up and pray, but you don't move him. Anybody know about that? Yeah. Come on, how many of y'all? One lady told me, this is not funny, but it is funny. She said, Providence, I was so sleepy. She said, I rolled out the bed. <laughs> She said, I didn't stay in the bed, but I fell asleep on, on the rug. <laughs> she said, but I meant I was getting out that bed. She said, I was so tired, probably. She said, but I woke up. She said, different hours, and I prayed. I said, well, praise the Lord, baby. You got out the bed. Praise the Lord. As long as Jesus was good, I'm good. I'm good. Develop a prayer life. Okay. So you're going to have to decide how to develop one. You know your weakness. You know what your struggles are. You know. See, you know you're one of the ones that won't just listen to him when he says, I look for thee. And then you say, oh, God, I got to get up. So then he just make you go to the bathroom all night long. He said, okay, you're going to get up. Or you make the baby cry every hour on the hour. He said, yeah, you're going to get up. Or the neighbors start to have a party to make you get up. He said, oh, yeah, you're going to get up. But you have to develop a prayer life. You have to hunger for one. Because, see, prayer going to change you. Prayer's going to cause you to release. And sometimes you got to add different times in there. Now with me, places work for me. I can start a war thing anytime. I can thirst for him anytime. Anytime I'm by myself, I, I yearn for him. I say, Lord, I need more. I learn to talk to him all the time. And I learned that from one of my mentors. Because he was so personal to her. Like, I mean, like she talked about him like he was daddy. I said, okay. I said, well, Lord, I want to love you like her. I, I, I want that touch, just like that. And do you know I found that I began to walk, and the walking made me tell my, him my heart. So any time I found anything that I was able to release my heart, I found that as a new path. One time I bought a certain chair. don't know why I bought a green chair, but I did buy a green chair. 
And in that green chair, when I sat there, that was my God chair. I found like I was, I felt like I was in his lap. What works for you? Now, when you're dealing with real demonic spirits that you can't shake loose, nothing, yeah, you, you got to find a place to get to that, that kingly, priestly anointing, and that's going to be on your floor. On the face, with your, your face in the floor. Like, there ain't no Lord you can get. All of you is on that floor. But there's times you got to find places to love on them and get that intimacy. Intimacy will stop all the chaos. Ooh, you know that struggle? You know all those mind battles? Ooh, yeah, see, intimacy gonna do that. But it's gonna produce a unique anointing as well. How do you flow in the anointing? Obedience, study the word, develop a prayer life, and live holy. See, they're not talking about holiness anymore. But you know what I found? It is the key. Because he is holy. Do you know when you begin to have a mind to live holy, do you know you think about what you do? Yeah. You know when you go by Aunt Lucy's house and just kind of take some of her stuff? You wouldn't do that. Because that holiness is going to get you. You better bring it back. You better ask before you do that. You don't just borrow it. Just because Walmart got 300 of them, you, don't, you can't just borrow one. You understand. Yeah, I know a Holy Ghost Christian stole the Bible. I said, you need to bring that back. I said, I said, what is that? I said, where's the holiness in there? So what do you call holiness? It's like him. It pleases him. Accept the call. You want to flow in the anointing? Stop resisting the call. Stop trying to make God out this little puppet thing. Okay, I'll do this, but I won't do this. I don't want this. I don't, what are you doing? Accept the call and the anointing will flow. Accept it. And then go get some training. And it's going to flow. Obey the call. He says that he's anointed you to witness. I need you to witness and stay there. He anointed you to intercession. You all of a sudden getting up. You have a burden for people. You get so angry when injustice has come. Baby, that's an intercessor's anointing. Mm-hmm. Walk in the call. Walk at it. So, obey the voice of the Holy Spirit when he begins to speak. Surrender and obey, and the anointing will birth out of you. Then go find some mentorship and tell somebody to train you so you don't hurt anybody else. Let's go through that again. Obedience to the water word of God. Study the word of God. Develop a prayer life. Live holy. Accept the call. Obey the call, walk in the call, obey the Holy Spirit. See, when you start doing those first five, the Holy Spirit is going to begin to, to begin to address you personally. I remember when I first met one of my daughters of the heart, and she just said, God, don't talk to me. She said, only time he talks to me is when I'm in the wrong place and he's giving me a butt whipping. I said, but the Lord God said he's getting ready to start giving you dreams. Within three or four days, she started having dreams, and that is his way that he deals with you. The Holy Spirit is so, it's so personable. Do you know if you love music, he'll deal with you in music? Uh-huh. Anyway, he knows the personal intricacies of your heart. Do you know the Lord is always looking for people to use? Do you know he, he does all of this all the time? Just give me one that'll say yes. I, I just need somebody that'll do what I say. Can you imagine that? All the people in this world that need to be, need to be converted, need to, be, need to meet Jesus, he's still looking for one that'll stand for him. Are we going to be that one today? Yes. Are you going to be that one today? Yes. Yes. Would you open your mouth and minister? Mm -hmm. Okay, I got a challenge for you coming. Surrender. Surrender will birth the anointing. Because surrender was when you say yes. You want me to go out in the park? Yes. You want me to go on the train? Yes. Wherever you want me to go? Yes. And then the mentorship, which is powerful. Most anointings can be dropped on you. The anointing does not belong to the person but they can wear it and carry it. And because of servanthood and yieldedness and able to submit, you can take on the anointing. 
Merck, um, what is Mark, what is his name? Mike Murdoch. He said, and, and I, it has always changed my life. He said, a mentor can knock 30 years of pain off your life because they can stop you from pain if you disobey and humble yourself. In other words, the mentor can say, there's a wall over there. You're going to hit the wall. Don't go that way. And you can humble yourself and listen. Change the rest of your life. Or you can go on through the 30 years. Yeah, go ahead on. Get the wrong job. Get in the wrong place. Move this place. Run into this. Some people learn by experience. How many of you have learned by experience? How many of you learned by mentors? I bet that one was easier. For sure, for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Preparing for ministry and accepting the call. You see, miracles is wonderful. It's wonderful to see miracles. But we are not sustained by miracles. We are sustained by the Word of God. Healing and deliverance come by the Word of God. How many of you need a shift in your call, in your your passion for God. Oh, you in the right place today, because I promise you, we can ready to flip this place. Oh, oh yeah. We're going to pull up chairs and we're going to flip this place. I can tell you that right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's time to activate anointings in here. Mandirabashi. Y'all should know better than to come to a free place like this. <laughs> this ain't the place to be cute. Not here. Mm -mm. There are many giants, many giants, spiritual giants that we've had. You know, Billy Graham, Kenneth Hagen, Derek Prince, many great, great, Oral Roberts, great giants that did great things for the Lord. They weren't perfect, but they did great things. But guess what? And the Lord was ministering to me this morning as I was preparing for this, and he said, the great ones are gone. He said, but I'm stirring up a new army. Will you be in the army? What you here for? What are you here for? Are you just here to sit on a bump on the log? What? What are you here for? Now let me say this. And another word that he dropped prophetically, he said, the season is getting ready to get rough. Mm -hmm. He said, God, he said, I have need of giants. Where are the giants? Where are the new giants? They laying low. They laying low, but they done sit under giants. And that anointing is permeating in there. Nobody even know him. Nobody even care to know him. They just, oh yeah, he used to work for him. Oh yeah, she used to do, that don't mean anything. But there's a set time the Bible talks about. It's a set time. Giants are birthed at a set time for a certain position, at a certain time, in a certain place. So that's why when your life starts taking that shift and you're, you're whining and complaining, let the shift come on. Come on, come on, shift. Shift means God say, okay, I got something else new. You, what, you're crying over a job. It's done there. You're done over there. I'm going to transport you. I'm going to move you to something else. I'm going to give you a desire. Have you ever woken up with a new desire inside of your heart? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you didn't even like doing what you was doing. You was like, don't like your job. You're like, what? Oh, God, name of Jesus. Don't quit no jobs, nobody. But you wake up. God is depositing that in. You know why? The anointing getting ready to shift. Do you know when God get ready to shift an anointing, he moves you in greater territories? Yeah, see, some of y'all still local. He's trying to get you to go to the United States. He's trying to get you to go to international. It's time for a shift. Do you know God don't have to do nothing but once send one person to connect you? Just one. You don't need a whole bunch of people. God has need of you. And all that time you done sat there and got that word just all in your belly. And you just feel like, God, I've just been sitting here. No, you packing up. You st it's stored in there for purpose. Now get this. The task ahead is heavy. People gonna need us. Do you understand? 
they're going to be running loss, not knowing what to do because they haven't prepared. They don't know God. They're going to be trying to figure out they've been pulling on their jobs and that's not going to work. They're going to need us, the remnant, us. You know the ones they didn't want to hear, you know that preaching woman? Or you know that band that all oh, just always won't tell you what to do? Yeah, they're going to need us because we're going to have great seeds in us. 2 Timothy 1 and verses 8 through 9 tells us, Be not ashamed of the holy calling. How do you prepare for a holy calling? Anybody else saying, oh, I need to go to Bible school. No, you don't. You need to go to school of the Holy Spirit. God needs to give you a double dose of his power and an encounter that will change your life. Oh, my God, that would change your Do you know an encounter can beat no school? When God didn't sit there and dealt with you himself? There ain't nothing Pharaoh or nobody else could teach Moses when he saw him face to face. There were impartations leaving, going on the inside of him for years to come. You got to be led by God. See, when God begins to call you, you start having a leading. First, he begins to fill your heart with the word. Then he takes the word and the word starts shaping you and preparing you for the work. You don't even know it's happening. Then he starts revealing the word to you. That's when he starts making the word simple for you. I could read the scripture, but it's something, it means something totally different to you. Mm -hmm. As you begin to yield, that is the greatest key, yielding and surrendering will birth the anointing and the perfect will of God for your life. See, those of you that are bucking God, demanding, how many of y'all lately didn't have one of them powwow screaming fits with God? Demanding God to move. Okay, I know y'all not gonna tell me, but that's okay. I'm not gonna rebuke you, I promise. Let me say this to you. You wanna move the hand of God? Surrender. Give it all up to him. Anything he wants, say, God, whatever you want. I'm good. Whatever you want. And if your spirit is hard to surrender, keep saying it over and over. Eventually that power gonna raise up in you and you're gonna crush it. And you're gonna find that that hard thing, see that hard heartedness, keeps you from the anointing. It keeps God from moving. You're not yielded enough. You know why you still got your way? You got your way what you want and what you feel. But God said, if you surrender, he said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. I'll give you everything you're looking for. How many of you think you plan in your life? You're not, you're not. It's already done. When you yield, you press the go button and things start lining up. So then after you yield, he reshapes you. He redevelop you. All of a sudden that hard heart is, all of a sudden that stuff, he just starts shaping that thing. Then he starts to give you downloads. Then he starts to feed your heart. When God feeds your heart, the hard heartedness leave and your heart become like mush. Then you can hear him, you can feel him, you know what he's saying. Oh, prophetess, I don't understand. I can't, I, I can't hear him. You hard-hearted. Why are you hardness? Why? Tell me why your heart is hardened. Why can't you hear him? If you soften that heart, find that person that is an idol that is in the way of you and God. That's the one that's keeping the anointing from flowing. And do you know it could be years back? Years. Those people could be dead and going home to glory years, but they hardened your heart. Oh my God. And because they got your heart hardened, you blaming somebody else. My God. So then he begins to feed your heart the more it gets softened. Well, why do I feel such an anointing with that? Who you harden your heart by? They're keeping you out of the glory. They're keeping God from anointing that hand. See, that right hand is special. But the heart is so hardened, you can't even hear him. 
He said, I speak to you, I talk to you, I whisper to you, but you don't hear me. Mm -hmm. And when that heart becomes softer, his will becomes revealed. First Peter 3 and 15, sanctify your heart and be ready, be suitable, be trained. Be ready to give an answer when asked. You got to get ready for ministry. You got to get ready. You got to have more word in you. If somebody comes and asks you, prophet, you know, you know, how do I do this? You're supposed to be a ready minister. They come in in you because God's put that anointing and they see God in you. When they call you for advice, they're not calling upon your, your specialty. That's the anointing drawing them. It's drawing them. Proverbs 24 and 27. Prepare thy works and be ready. And after then, <laughs> build thine house. Build your house. How are you going to start ministering your house jacked up? Okay. Somebody get the scripture and read it out loud for me. Proverbs 24 and 27. Prepare thy work and be ready. And afterwards, build thine house. You got to work on your house. You got to work on your house. You start working on your house, God's going to work that thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why don't you read that for me? Prepare your work outside and get it ready for yourself in the field. Afterward, build your house and establish a home. Mm-hmm. Build your house and establish your home. So when the work comes, when God's getting ready to use you, he starts to clean up the house. Sometimes he cleans up this house. He work on that outward house. Then he cleans up this house. And then it says, be suitable, be ready, be prepared. See, whenever the Lord starts molding, making you deal with hard things, oh baby, he's ready to use you. He said, but I can if your mother's deep down in there. He said, I can if your father deep down in there. He said, because there's going to be a day you're going to meet somebody on their Damascus road and they're going to look like your father and you're going to flip. He said, you got to get your house ready. See, they're going to trip you up because the memory going to come back. And then you're not, you're not going to be able to stay on your path because it's going to look like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look so similar that you won't even be able to meet the need of the person. God has, God is looking for people that he can put an anointing upon and call them to do great things. I have a scripture. And this is the one that the Lord called me. Um, when the Lord called me, I was in one of the worst parts of my life. I can remember the floor as to this day. I can even tell you how the towel was going when I was on the floor. And very loudly, he said, go to Luke 4 and 18 and 19. And the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. I said, please, Lord, I'm in a mess, and you want me to go preach to somebody. He says, he had sent me to proclaim release to the captive and to recover the sight to the blind. I said, then you're going to anoint me for the bad people, the ones nobody want. Mm -hmm. He said, to set liberty. I'm bound, but you want me to go set them free. I'm, this is me and the Lord going back and forth, right? Lord, they bruised. Uh, I'm bruised too. I'm hurt. I'm to the floor right now. He said to set liberty to them that are bruised, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So I began to search. I said, well, what is the acceptable year of the Lord? It was called Jubilee in the Hebrew tradition. I'm like, wait, 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 what? So the year of Jubilee, which came in the 50th year, was a year full of releasing the people from debt and releasing all slaves and returning property to them that owned. See, but nobody knew what that meant to me. 
Now, I could have stopped at the scripture and didn't really break it down. But they don't know that the devil had just tried to take something from me. That was a prophecy to me. And two days later, it was given back to me. See, but nobody would have understand what Jubilee meant. Oh, I got up off that floor and I shouted all over the place. And then I went back to the scripture and I said, okay, Lord, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me and I shall preach to those people. And I will welcome the bruise. I will welcome them, Lord. And you know what? I've been having nothing but nut buckets come since. <laughs> Nut buckets, the ones nobody wants. And guess what? The pastors would even tell me, go see her. She helped little abuse people. Come back when you're finished. I say, he told, so I say, oh, no, she must be lying. I call him. He said, oh, yeah, I, I don't do women. I don't, I don't do, I'm, I said, what? He said, can you help them for me? And then send them back. I said, okay. I hear you, Lord. Nobby Healing Center was birthed that day. Mm -hmm, it was birthed. And he has sent me to proclaim, release. See, that's when my deliverance anointing came. And he reminded me of the first day that that anointing of deliverance happened. I was at a church called Abiding Temple with Rita Smith. Had no clue. Didn't, didn't talk to the woman, sat in the service on the back of the seat. But guess what? I don't know if y'all know Rita Smith, but baby, people came to her for deliverance. Although I thought it was real crazy at the time, had no clue, didn't even know why I was there. Met a woman and the Lord said, I'm gonna show you where the deliverance anointing came from. Sometimes you don't know who God's gonna use. You don't know what happens in a service. I could see myself right now sitting on the back of that seat. And I kept saying, what are these people doing, Lord? But I never questioned it in great detail. But I knew when I left there, something fell off. But years later, he said the deliverance started at that point. So I began to read, to set a liberty to them that are bruised. See, that's why I get the kind that's always bruised and hurting. What kind you get? Do y'all even deal with those kind? You know the kind that's smelly. You know, in the spirit, when you're in sin, you smell. You have no aroma. Your aroma stink. You look bad. You look ugly. Yeah, you need to be cleaned up. Oh, for sure. Let me tell you this. Do you know the anointing, when it hits somebody's life, it puts a glory on you. It will shape you, make you look like you're so pretty. You don't know where it come from. They start looking at the outward, but that's the inward permeating out. Somebody asked you, did you get new makeup? No, just delivered. Wow. That's all, just delivered, that's all. Just knocked off a few little demons and now you can see my smile. All of a sudden there's a glory there. The anointing comes to destroy the yoke, the yoke that's on the inside. So you can be of service. Mm. There are seven manifestations, actually I think eight of them. Whenever the anointing is coming upon you, there will begin to be a glory upon your life. The Lord will begin to immediately start, he'll do one or two things. He'll start rumbling up everything and make you have to move, change, make your job come to an end. Or he'll start mending things together and making divine order come. He'll do one or the other. Most time, either one, he's still moving. The anointing begins to clean. You begin to be convicted. All of a sudden now there began to be a burden of things that you used to could not do. All of a sudden, it's almost like somebody put a big shining spotlight and now all of a sudden you hear and see everything, even about yourself. This is the list. The anointing will bring an urgency to talk about Jesus and share the gospel, just like the woman at the well. She met a man that changed her world. You cannot begin to have an anointing coming up on your life and you don't talk about Jesus. You, you just have to. The worst thing they could do is ask you a question because that's an open door to talk about it. Number two, the anointing will bring a hunger for the scripture. You will have a passion to know the Bible and know his way. You begin to look for a path. Just like Paul, 
Paul didn't have a hunger until God dealt with him. That's what put that hunger there. He had a touch from God. The anointing will produce a desire to heal others, just like Stephen. He said he was being full of the Holy Ghost, full. Do you know there's a process of deliverance? How many times that people get saved and they go to church and they really get touched by God? But when they don't go home, if somebody doesn't give them some word, put them around like kind, begin to cultivate them, begin to put some scriptures in them, they're not gonna last. And you might say, well, prophet is all they saved, yeah. If they confess Jesus, they are. But they will live hell down here. They will not live the victorious life here. Sometimes people stop. Do you know some spirit-filled believers? They got to spirit-filled, but they didn't go into deliverance. So even with them being spirit-filled, guess what? They got some little pet demons that show up every so often. So you might say, well, prophetess, how is that? Oh yeah, they, their spirit got definitely spirit-filled. But guess what? Their soul still got a whole lot of that stuff in it. That's why you can see it. Have you ever went to churches and you have spirit-filled people, tongue talkers? And then you wonder, like, well, how they could do that? They just didn't go through the whole process. They stopped. They didn't go to deliverance. So that's why they could lie. That's why they could cheat. That's why they could do different things. That's why there's no conviction. Look at your neighbor and say, we're going through the whole process. We're going through the whole process. The full thing. The full thing. Like Stephen. Like Stephen. Being full of the Holy Ghost. Being full of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. The anointing gives you a desire to remove darkness and fire to pull other people out. Do you know who that was like? That was like Jesus. He didn't like nobody bound. He came to bring light. He saw demons, he fasted his eyes upon them and they had to come out. The anointing will bring a prophetic anointing and it will also bring dreams. God will begin to speak to you. God will begin to talk to you. Mm-hmm, he will. Just like Jacob. He went to sleep, had a dream, God ministered to him, began to show him visions. Prophetically, God will begin to speak to individuals. He'll begin to talk to you. The anointing coming up on your life will make you have to have clarity. You'll feel lost without him. The anointing will bring you into a desire to praise and worship. God will begin to give you a song, and in the song, he's speaking to you. In the song, he's starting to talk to you. And number eight, the anointing will produce prosperity and an abundance of godly wealth like Abraham and Solomon. Why don't you look at me for a moment? The anointing is something that happens here in the earth, but yet it's very spiritual. It's supernatural. You want to change? It's time to go into the supernatural. Today I want you to think about what are you anointed for? We're getting ready for the forum. And in the midst of the forum, we're going to discover some things about the anointing and what hinders the anointing. So if those of you might be saying, well, prophetess, why the anointing is not flowing on me? Why don't I have it? Why don't I feel that, that fire in my belly? How come I don't hear the, the unction or that knobby word coming up to say, prophesy to him? Or someone walk through the door and I can be able to sense what God is saying. Do you know you should be able to laugh and have fun with people at work and feel their pain and know what they need and begin to be their intercessor? Never tell them a thing. I go around my kids sometimes, never say a thing. Because you know when they're grown, they don't want you telling them anything. So you just do it in the Holy Ghost. And the Lord just drop you and tell you what they need. But see, you gotta be over to be obedient. So when the Lord, when the Lord says, tell her this or tell him that, you gotta obey. So in the forum today, we're gonna discover some things about the anointing. Mr. Tyler's gonna help me with the forum. Amy's going to be on the forum today. 
Minister Armstead's going to be on the forum. Sheila's going to be on the forum. And Lakeisha's going to be on the forum. Okay? So we are going to discover some things about the anointing. Now let me just tell you how intriguing the anointing is. You, I'd rather to walk in the anointing than eat or live. It's one of the most miraculous things for the anointing of God to come up on you, solve situations, tell you when to shut up, when to talk, to know atmospheres, to know what's going on on the inside of you. But you got to surrender. Do you know God want that to be your daily walk? Even in wherever you are right now in your walk with God, you ask the Lord for a double portion of his anointing. Say, God, I want to walk in you. When I talk, I want men's hearts to burn because of the power that is on the inside. Today, we're going to activate some anointings.